Hi, and welcome to 8-Bit Resurgence. Uh, this is Thomas, and today I want to talk about a project that I've been working on for oh, about six months now, and it's the 1581 board. Um, I had, uh, about six months or so ago, I had created a, a reproduction of the 1581 um, drive PCB, and uh, and then kind of other things came along and I put it aside. Anyway, I've, I've recently gotten back to it and I've done the changes to it that I really wanted to do. Um, the first run of the board uh, was basic, uh, a, a basic recon recreation of the board and it worked fine. Um, but I wanted a little bit more. Um, you know, given the, the prices of things these days, I mean, for the, the CIA chip that you're going to need for the board, uh, those are quite expensive um, and you know I want to try to keep the costs of building one of these things down so I uh, one thing I wanted to go after was the power supply um, recently uh, you know you see uh, see them show up on eBay and they're you know, 40 50 dollars um, US for a power supply and that's what you know sixty dollars seventy dollars canadian for a working one um that's a lot of money um but there's a a lot cheaper way of powering one of these um i don't know if you're familiar with the cmd drives the floppy drives but they just used a just one of those little wall board power supplies um you know you can pick one up from adafruit for nine bucks um their power supplies are really nice and uh, I thought, you know what, it would be really nice to be able to power a 1581 with that. Since the drive board doesn't use the 12 volts in the 41.2 um, 1581 power supply at all, it just uses the 5 volts, I thought, well, why not um, go with, with just a, uh, one of those little cheaper power supplies that will do the job just fine. <coughs> now on the on the board, as you can see um, right here, using two cameras today, there's an area there, you know, I filled it in with, with my recreation, but there's um, an area on this board that was empty. And, and that's where the, the little LED board um, came from. It was, is used to print that one and, but it's, it's just empty space and, and to, manufacture the board with that empty space versus a PCB area in there uh, doesn't change the cost so so I decided <clears throat> it would be nice to put a circuit on the board that would allow you to put any hook any power supply up to it well within reason um, it would have to be uh, a DC power supply um, but an amp would do the job just fine um, <coughs> the uh, the voltage range however I wanted you to be able to um, pick any power supply so you could go to a thrift store um, just pick any power supply so long as it uh, has a suitable amount of current and a vo voltage within a range um, that you could just plug it in and it would work um, not a fan of these devices that say you have to have uh, you know a, a 9 volt power supply and uh, and then, you know, if you have a 9.5, you could cause damage or, you know, I think it would be a, a lot nicer to be able to just take anything you've got. Um, doesn't have to be a wall work, could be a, an old laptop power supply. Uh, so long as you ensure that you do, you set the polarity correctly and connect it properly to the board where you're supposed to, um, that you could use that. Um, that would certainly dramatically drop the price of your drive that you're building. Um, so that's what I did. I incorporated a, a nice circuit on there um, that allows you to connect any power supply from 7 to 25 volts DC. Um, you plug it in right there. And positives on the right, negatives on the left. That's on the silk screen here. Um, see right there. That's hidden behind that key connector that I put on there um, uses a voltage regulator that's in the bill of materials 
and a couple of capacitors. And then to control um, which power supply you're using, um, I thought, you know, it would be nice to be able to support both on this. Uh, but you don't want to accidentally have two of them plugged in at the same time. Who knows what kind of havoc that would cause. So I put a jumper block on here. It's right there. So if it's in the, it shorts two and three, that means it's going to use this power supply right here. And if you move it over to one and two, then it's going to use the original power supply here. So you, if you build it like this, um, you have the freedom to use anything. You could use a, you know, a nine volt data food power supply or a, a 15 volt IBM laptop power supply, you can use anything. Um, just keep in mind, however, that uh, the higher the voltage um, you're feeding into this, uh, the hotter it's going to get. So try to keep the voltages down. Uh, don't go below seven and a half volts. Um, I find nine works really well. This regulate voltage regulator does get hot. It is, it does have a, I did put a heat sink on there. Um, so that dissipates the heat um, just fine. Um, I've run this for hours and hours and hours and it just works, you know, it's, uh, it works exactly like I wanted it to. Um, so this is the board. This is the 1581 enhanced. Um, it has obviously the, the power supply, um, ability to use any, any power supply you want. It has on there. Um, it can use uh, a single or a du dual kernel that's controlled right there. Um, this right here is where you plug the LEDs in and that's a small LED board um, that attaches to the back of the face of the drive and that gives you your activity and your power light. So this is the board and I know a lot of people, they, they've created these and they're selling them. And I had a different plan when I originally started this project. Um, I wanted people to be able to make these drives um, themselves and for a reasonable amount of money. Um, and as many as they want, you know, and in whatever color PCB they want. Um, so. At for uh, you know when I started doing this, I thought you know it would be nice to um, make this available to everybody. So that was my plan six months ago, and and I finally, finally completed it, and um, now it's out there. So what I did is I uploaded the Gerber files to PCBWay, and it's in the shared uh, projects folder, and you can download um not download you can't download the gerbers i what i did is i i put it on there um but so that you can order as many pcbs as you like um i do get a small commission um for every order and that's not tacked on top of the cost of the pcbs that that comes from uh pcb way for uh them getting business i guess um, so, and that bit of money helps me go on and, and do other projects, um, that I can share with you guys. Uh, so that's how I decided to release it. Um, I also decided that, uh, it's not just being released for you to use personally. Um, if you want, you can order a few for yourself and build them as many as you want for your yourself you can have a make a whole stack of drives if you want um or you can order you know a hundred boards and you can start selling them that's okay i don't mind you can um i think it would be really great if you can keep the price reasonable maybe under 20 bucks for for a board i think um the goal here really you know my my desire for building this was to uh Put it out there so that people could afford to get one um you know the the prices of of 1581s are ridiculous these days um you know 400 to 500 i've even seen 600 dollars for a, a 1581 
and and in Canadian dollars that's you know seven eight hundred dollars for us up here so um, that kind of puts it out of the price range of a lot of people and it's a great drive um, a lot of fun to use and this is a really easy project to solder up it's you know all the chips are sought you socket all those uh, resistors capacitors diode uh, some resistor packs and and ferrite beads and a crystal and you know all really basic soldering um, anybody can do it uh, so I created a github with the build materials and pictures and a description of everything that's out there now and uh, on PCB way in my shared projects folder along beside the the phantom which I put out there and the CSI connect um, that's that's all there and the uh, 1581 enhanced that I created that's out there as well and uh, so you can order them if you like and start building them um, so I think that's about it uh, I have also created uh, cases uh, I, uh, but that's gonna be a separate video I'm gonna discuss that um, and uh, let you know how you can get one of these or print one of these yourself so didn't want to go on too long uh, about this I just wanted to show the board um, it has you know all the regular connections uh, you might notice um, on this board uh, the switch is a lot taller than than factory um, I got a really good deal from Jamie Co on on some switches and because I'm designing the case I can use whatever switch I want so I uh, I modified my my case design for for my switches that I got here um, but use a standard switch and uh, and you can just use a standard case and that'll work um, one other thing I wanted to also show that I forgot is this um, this little pigtail going back to the power supply um, this is kind of the idea that I had on powering it it's just a little key connector I made sure that uh, positive was on the right from our perspective here and then you just plug your your power in there with the jumper set where it is right there as you can see on the camera and then this drive will be powered um, by any power supply um, one other thing that I wanted to mention is a really neat board and the Gerbers are out there I'll put a link in the description to where you can find that and that's this board here and this is a really neat little board um, the 1581 needs a an Amiga power not an Amiga an Amiga floppy drive so if it's configured to work on an Amiga it would work in a 1581 uh, however, there are limited models of floppy drives that will work, um, that will are convertible. I'll say um, some drives don't have a ready signal, so and this um, drive does need it. So some aren't easily convertible, and there are a lot of drives out there that don't have um, any information on the web to tell you how to do it. What this little wonder board does for you is it plugs um, onto the two connectors so it plugs onto the the power header and the the, the where the data cable plugs in and it just plugs in just like that and what it does is it allows you to use any pc um, drive so any 1.44 meg um, ibm compatible drive um, you can plug it in there uh, the power transfers from there to the, the power supply and it just works so you don't have to fumble around with trying to cut traces and run jumpers and um, it just you put one of these boards together uh, costs very little to order these boards there's really again there's nothing much to this board there's an IC 74 HCT 02 um, some pin headers uh, make a cable and you're set you can use any drive you want um, I've tried 
uh, Neutronix, Mitsumi, um, Panasonic, TIAC, uh, Samsung, um, Sony, lots of different drives and they've all worked. I haven't found a drive that doesn't work. Um, I just test the drive obviously on a PC first, make sure I can read and write and format it. Um, if it works there, plug it into this on, uh, on a 1581 board that's soldered up correctly and it'll work fine. So yeah, what you got, what you see in here is, um, a completely functional 1581 board that's ready for a drive in a case and then you're off and running. So that's that's for real now uh, all I wanted to say about this. Um, thanks for watching. Um, please do like and subscribe uh, if you'd like to see more information. Um, the next video that I'm going to produce is going to discuss uh, the 1581 case and uh, how you can get one of those um, for this project. Um, again, the goal is uh, to build one of these things um, inexpensively. So um, I'll show you uh, what I did and how I designed it um, and its features. And that's going to be in an upcoming episode. So um, if you subscribe and click the bell, uh, you'll be notified as soon as it's uploaded. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Bye.